All right, so we are getting ready to do the epoxy resin on top of the contact paper. So I didn't do a video showing how to lay the contact paper because there's plenty of YouTube videos showing that, but we use the Easy Liner. Um, it has to say surfaces on it. And this is the white marble. And I showed a picture at the beginning, but it turned out really, really good. Um, and now as far as the resin, we're using the stone coat part A, part B. This came from Amazon. Um, I purchased a three piece set of these little plastic things. I don't really know what they're called. We don't have measuring cups, but we did just so happen to have these two plastic containers. That's the exact same size from a to go order. I'm going to be honest. Okay, because the instructions say that you have to use the exact same amount of A and B when mixing this up. We have a bucket that we're going to mix this up in using the um, wood painters thing. We have a paintbrush. We plastic everything off in the kitchen. This is just like a old rag because we've been doing a lot of remodeling so we have this plastic uh, tape this came from Amazon I'll put that in the description um, just some different brushes I wanted to have different options available and then the heat gun this was highly recommended because once we start pouring the epoxy resin on the countertop is going to create air bubbles and the heat gun is supposed to pop the air bubbles you can use a torch. We don't have any experience with the torch. So this was the thing that was recommended if you don't have experience with the torch. So I wanted to just lay all of that out there. Um, show you guys before we get started. I'm going to try to record as we do this. But I've seen in other videos that this can be very, very messy. And of course, you do not want to get this on your phone camera. So... We will see what happens. I'll definitely do some clips and you'll be able to see the before and after. So this is just the contact paper alone. No shine or anything to it. And we did the peel and stick backsplash, which we love. We stained the cabinets in the kitchen. So we didn't record all of that, but we did want to do the epoxy resin on top of the contact paper because I could not find any videos on this. Um, especially showing you how to do it. So we're going to take on that challenge. So stay tuned. All right, y'all. So using, using those little measuring cups that I showed you, we ended up doing two parts resin and two parts of the epoxy. And we have it in a bucket. And we're just using the painter stick, whatever it's called, to just blend it up. Um, I saw in multiple videos that they said, make sure if you don't have the electric mixer, that you mix for the entire five minutes straight very very thorough to make sure that it's mixed together well so you can see my husband he is mixing it up i have my timer set while i'm recording this and the timer is going to go off in exactly five minutes so we're just going to mix we're going to pour all of the mixture out on to the countertop because that's what the videos told us Every single video that I watched said to make sure you pour out all of the mixture. Don't pour out part of it and leave part of it in a bucket because it's going to harden up faster than what you can believe. So instead, if you pour it all out on the countertops and then just try to disperse it as best as you can, you have more time to actually work with the mixture. So I hope that made sense. It made a lot of sense to us. So make sure we're going to pour all of this out. Then we're just going to play around with those little um, flat things. Uh, I don't remember what they're called. Those little putty knife type looking things. We're going to see if that feels better or the paint roller. So we're just going to play around and see which one feels better for dispersing. Um, another tip that we got from the video is that you want to make sure that when you put this on the counter, you're spreading this out completely even. So that's why we want to make sure, um, you know, we want to kind of feel the painters, uh, the roller versus the little knife. In addition to that, as it relates to those two different substances, the resin 
is a little thicker or a lot thicker than the hardener. So what was recommended is that you put the lighter of the two substances in first. Why? Because the resin being thicker will automatically sink to the bottom. So if it starts off at the bottom, then the hardener doesn't have a chance to penetrate. However, if you start with the lighter hardener at the bottom and you pour the resin on top, it has the ability to go ahead and pierce through, which kind of naturally starts the mixing process. So start with the lighter, pour it in first, then follow with the thicker. Do you feel it at all getting thicker as you mix it, or does it feel pretty good? Feels pretty good. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So that means we, we got to be doing it right if it's not thickening up on him while he's mixing, y'all. Yeah, yeah. So next thing, when this timer go off, it's about to go off here in a second. We're going to pour it all out on the counter. Just literally pour it all out on the counter, and then we're going to disperse it. Okay. All right, so he's pouring it out. And we saw a couple of different tricks um, as it pertains to pouring it um some people say it goes side to side kind of like what marcus is doing some people literally just ran all the way down all the way around and just covered all of the countertops uh, we're still trying to work out how we're going to do up here but we think that we're going to take the paintbrush and do that area but if you notice the mixture is really really thick but again you have to pour out all of the mixture all of the mixture and then disperse it. Um, a lot of the videos, only one person was doing this. I'm glad that it's two of us. All right. So he's just going all the way around. He's doing all of the countertops and we're going to get to work guys. And I'll be back. Okay. So after playing around for 2.5 seconds, we discovered that the paint roller is most definitely the best way to go with this epoxy you see all of the drips coming off so it's really really thick so what marcus is doing right now is taking the paint roller from the very back corner all the way up in just an even stroke and then running it over the edge this is a technique that we saw in the video is you let it drip over the edge and then you know you're gonna see a lot of drips but you want to wait until it thickens up quite a bit because it's only going to continue to run and continue to drip. But once it starts to thicken up, then you can take your just your glove and your finger and just run it smooth along the edge and catch all of those drips. So that's what we're doing. So we have this um, countertop going. There we go from an angle. Now you can kind of see that gloss. You can see the bubbles in there. That's where the heat gun is going to come in at and pop all of those bubbles. So we have this countertop and then we've also already done the countertops over here. Um, we just completely removed our oven because we have a new oven coming. Um, so we just wanted to get it out the way so that we can get all of these edges and everything um, as well. But... We already have these just kind of painted and still going. Just trying to make sure everything is as even as possible. Um, up here on the edge, I was still able to use the small paint roller for this. But we also have a paintbrush where we just made sure we got all the way up in there. And just making sure again that we have the epoxy on every single part of the counter um, so that's what we're doing we're just going slow slow and steady uh, making sure that everything is in place and things are going smooth and yeah all right so <laughs> I'm gonna end it there all right so we have all of the epoxy on but you see these bubbles in here He's using a heat gun, so we have that plugged up, using a heat gun to just go pop all of the bubbles. And also, it's going to kind of move around the mixture a little bit, but it's going to pop the bubbles and really just kind of even it out. So you need to figure out a good motion, whether you're going from side to side, whether you're going up and down, figure out a good motion to pop those bubbles and really just spread the mixture around. Okay, 
so we finished the epoxy resin as you can see we ended up putting glitter in the countertops okay and the reason being is when we put the heat the heat gun on i think the heat gun was too close to where there were some imperfections keep in mind we had contact paper down so you can see where i'm not gonna say holes but little what we thought were bubbles were maybe the beginning stages of holes if that makes sense like it was about to cook the contact paper. yeah like maybe it was about to cook the contact paper or something like that so we decided to add some glitter and the glitter actually covers all of the imperfections in the countertop so we'll see what this is like when it dries i have a feeling it's going to turn out like beautifully um to be honest with you guys this stuff is a sticky mess okay you got to be ready you got to protect your floors okay we don't care about our floors but we still don't want sticky spots and slick spots all in the floors so we kept finding where the plastic weren't hold, you know, wasn't holding up and there was puddles of epoxy on the floor and we had to hurry up and get it up and stuff like that. So be careful. What I can say is that if your heat gun is further away from the contact paper, it will actually melt it and slick it down in the corners and, and just, um, what is it called? Seal it. Seal it yeah, like, and mold. Yeah, like really good and clean and slick like if you look at these um, edges here but if you get too close if your heat gun is too close keep in mind it can burn it it can it can cause like some imperfections and possibly even you can burn holes in your contact paper so make sure you're keeping your um heat gun pretty high up and just kind of go from left to right covering the area you got anything to add mark Nah, I think you nailed it. We uh, you know, that the glitter It'll probably come close. The glitter, the glitter came in as a a touch up, but I think this might inspire somebody to incorporate that as well. And you know, we're doing some additional enhancements that will allow the light to make the glitter sparkle. I think it comp complements it well. Drop some in the comments if you think the glitter is a cool addition to the white marble contact paper. But yeah. I'm, I'm with it. I think it's going to be good. But the main thing is to have fun with it because, you know, you can try to be so perfect and, you know, you, you mess around and have to do a tweak that might turn out better than what you imagined to begin with. So we just went with the flow, have fun with it, and here we are. Yep. All right, guys. So we are about to lay it down. We're going to let this dry overnight. Um... We're probably going to turn a couple of fans on. Hopefully that helps with the drying time. And then I will show you guys the finished product. All right, guys. So we wanted to show our final results from our countertop. Look at how shiny, how sleek, how glossy they are. They're fully dried. So we waited 72 hours. This is 72 hours later. Why did we wait 72 hours? Because on the content, based on the products that we use, it said dry to touch would be 24 hours. 72 hours mean light use. So we're at a light use phase, a little bit past the light use phase. So we at least wanted to give you a glimpse of how it looks when you can actually start using it lightly. And then seven days up to 30 days is fully Cure now, it really is in a position where, like we can use it regularly, and we have been using it, but we still been using it light because we want to make sure we maximize the time of it fully curing. But as you can see, it has like a glassy look to it, looks really sleek, and uh, yeah, we're very pleased with the results to say the least. And we added those glittery pieces in there, as we stated initially in the previous clip of the video but we're pleased with it and yes. just a quick disclaimer because i know a lot of people are worried about using the bucket or worried about damaging the bucket here's the thing this thing dries and hardens so clear and so solid to where if you do use a bucket then if this hardens in your bucket 
that then becomes the new bottom of the bucket. You can still reuse it as you wish because it's hard. However, what we accidentally did was left the stir stick inside the bucket. The painter stick that you use to stir up paint, that wooden stick, we used it to stir up the mixture. And by doing so, the stick hardened and got stuck in there. Well, I went to pull the stick out and it was so hardened on the stick that it actually pulled the whole epoxy bottom out. So what happened is it was like a plate of glass stuck to the stick and I got my bucket back to normal condition. So that was an accident, but it worked out in my favor. But if you definitely, if it hardens inside the bucket, no big deal. You can still use it like a normal bucket. Yes. And you guys, we're fully satisfied with this. I know a lot of people are worried about it being contact paper because that was my concern. It's contact paper and we're really about to try doing epoxy and resin on top of contact paper. Y'all, I promise you, you can't tell. Now, if you get really close, you can see the line from the contact paper, but I kid you not, it's no way, absolutely no way that that paper can come up. And a person has to be extremely close, like in here. They have to be extremely close to even see the lines in your contact paper. So please keep that in mind. Again, overall, we absolutely love it. I'm glad that we acted on this idea. Um, as far as how easy or how hard it is, what would you say? I I don't think it was hard at yeah, all, to be honest. I don't think it's hard. I think you just got to have fun with it. So as yeah. you saw how we were stroking, and it wasn't even perfect. It's just a matter of going through it, trying to keep it as level as possible, and then getting those air bubbles out, in which we didn't do perfectly, but with the glitter and with it drying and us not touching it, it just kind of worked itself out. So I think it was fairly easy. If you're up for the task, then do it. Have fun with it. Don't, you know, be so hard on yourself, but... Do it to the T, as we stated, and follow the instructions based on the material that you personally buy. And I think you'll be proud of yourself. And because we are big on trying to save money, this is definitely a money saver. Somebody else would have charged a certain amount just to replace the whole countertop. And this looks better than some paid-for countertops that we've seen, even though we use contact paper and the epoxy mixture to create this look. So if you're about saving money consider it all right so you guys again here's the final look um i can't wait to get our floors done and finish getting our new appliances it is going to be amazing and you guys we did also add some additional perks check this out we added motion sensor lights underneath every single one of our countertops so that when we walk in, the motion sensor lights literally just pop on. So that's one of my favorite features. I wanted to do that because the kitchen is so dark. Already we went with the dark gray paint and the black stain. I wanted to brighten it up another way instead of just leaving the light above the stove on or the light above the sink. And I think that this is a cool feature like... Once we decorate it and stuff like that, it's going to be super, super cool. But every time we walk through the kitchen, the lights literally pop on. And that's super, super cool. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you subscribe. Uh, make sure you check the comments. I'm going to list everything in there. Even the stuff that I did not video, like the contact paper that I used. I caulked it. You know, you can see that. We use a peel and stick backsplash. So all of that will be in the description. All right. Thanks for watching.